Oh, sorry. Distracted. Chapter 2, Lesson 2 of Advanced Algebra. I'm going to wrap this lesson up by looking at some problem-solving tips that we're going to need to uh, be able to use as we go and finish up this lesson. First thing I want you to remember is that all linear forms are, of the equations are interchangeable. By applying some algebraic properties, adding the opposite to move terms to the other side, we can manipulate any uh, equation that we begin with into any other equation that we would like. So that's going to be one of the major things you're going to have to be able to do as we go forward. Your job is really going to be to decide which form to begin with and in most cases the point slope form is going to be the best one to use and the reason is is that the point slope form is the least or requires the least specific information meaning for that equation all we need are two points doesn't matter what the two points are just as long as they're on the same line when you think about slope intercept form we have to have the slope or de determine the slope which we can using any two points but the intercept is a very specific point and if the information does not give us the intercept then we cannot begin with the slope intercept form so the point slope form is going to be the one that you're going to begin with most often one problem solving or one common mistake that I want you to avoid is to remember this that within standard form you cannot figure out or determine what the slope is when it's in standard form there's no M in standard form, there's no lowercase m, which represents slope. The only way to determine slope, if you begin with standard form, is to change it into slope intercept form, and once it's in that form, then the value next to the A, next to the X, is the slope. So don't make the mistake of thinking anything next to the X is the slope, because it's not true. It's only if it's in slope intercept form is that the case. And then we talked about a couple of conventions, making sure that there aren't any fractions in our final answer when it's in standard form, and that the leading term is not a negative when it's in standard form. So let me go ahead and do an example for you. Here we're given two points, and we're asked to write in slope-intercept form the equation of a line that goes through these two points. Now, we want to end up in slope-intercept form, but you'll notice we can't begin there because in order to use slope-intercept form, I have to know the slope, which I can calculate using these two points, but then I have to have the intercept, and neither of these two points is the intercept. So while I want to end up there, I cannot begin there. So we're going to have to begin with point slope, which I said is where we're going to have to begin most of the time. So I like to write it out just so I make sure I remember it and we need to calculate the slope so let's go ahead and do that first so slope you remember is the y coordinate minus the other y coordinate over the x coordinate minus the other x coordinate so if we simplify this it's negative 18 over 8 so that ends up being negative 9 over 4 so our slope is negative 9 for us and then we need to pick a point to put in for x1 and y1. I'm going to use these that have the smaller value because I know I'm going to have to algebraically manipulate this to go to slope intercept form so I'd rather use twos and ones than tens and seventeens so we're going to use that but you could use seventeens if you like to do that. So y minus the y coordinate equals my slope times x minus the x coordinate and then we're going to simplify this y plus one negative nine fourths x plus 2. Now you'll notice right here this is the point slope form of the equation. So that's the first form that we talked about. Well, that's not a t, that's an l. Okay, sorry. Point slope form. So we need to continue now to get into slope intercept form and the way to do that is to algebraically manipulate this so that y is by itself or solve the equation for y. So when we're solving equations, the first thing we always do is distribute. So we're going to distribute the 9 fourths. So that's going to be 2 9 halves. And then we want uh, the y by itself, so we're going to subtract 1. So negative 9 fourths x, we have minus 9 halves, and then we subtract the 1. Now we need to add the 9 halves and the 1's together, but those don't have the same denominator, so I'm going to have to change it to the same denominator. So I'm going to rewrite 1 as 2 over 2. That's still 1, but now it has a denominator of 2. So y is equal to negative 9 fourths x minus 11 halves. So this is then the slope-intercept form, uh, even though, why do I keep wanting to cross my L? I don't know what that's all about. So this is the slope-intercept form that we have 
even though we began with point slope. Okay, so we would be done with this problem. Okay, now I want to go one step further and show you how you get to standard form using the same one, just to show you that you can use this or use algebra to put it in any form that you want. You remember that standard form requires the x term to be first, so algebraically I'm going to move this to the other side by adding 9 fourths. So I'm going to put this on the other side, plus y then is equal to negative 11 halves. And as a matter of conventions, we don't want this denominator, so we're going to multiply by the denominator, so it will reduce. But I have to do that to every term in the equation. So that's going to reduce to 9x, and then I'm going to have 4y, and then it's going to times 2, so negative 22. So now I'm in standard form. So you can see I can use any form, or get to any form, just by manipulating the equation algebraically, and all I need is two points. And it doesn't matter which two points, because point-slope form allows me to do that. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Make sure you remember those tips, and uh, you should be able to do any of these problems. And uh, I guess we'll see you in class.